Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar event for empowering SME growth with intelligent trade finance solutions via fiber to fashion. My name is Maham Sadiqi. I am the regional head of the Asia marketing team here and commercial vice president for UAE business at Tradewind Middle East, speaking to you from Dubai. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you, your families, and your businesses are all safe and well as we adjust to the changing environment we currently find ourselves in. We will cover a few topics that will touch upon certain developments in the international markets, the ever-increasing need for liquidity management, and opportunities that could help you grow and sustain your business effectively. We will take all your questions towards the end of this presentation. It will be realistic to consider global trade will be shaky in the coming years. Exceptional growth has likely passed and will most probably not recover to pre-2008 global financial crisis levels. Uh, trade growth has been abnormally weak in recent years. Uh, world trade volume actually fell in 2019, even though the world economy grew fairly steadily. Uh, in the US, uh, there is an embracing of the America First policy shifting away from trade liber liberalization, uh, withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and moving towards greater protectionism. The Trump administration imposed tariffs on, tariffs on imports of steel and aluminum, seemingly on grounds of national security, uh, prompting a retaliation and the spread of trade barriers elsewhere. These steps threaten to slow or reverse the economic growth delivered by globalization. And even worse, new restrictions on trade could proliferate and inflict damage that could take decades to reverse. A second threat is import substitution, where there is an idea that blocking imports of manufactured goods can help an economy by increasing the demand for domestically produced goods. COVID-19 has contributed, yes, but it has also accelerated the disruption in the world trade for goods and services in both supply and demand sides. So as a result, more global companies are now actively looking to diversify their manufacturing production dependencies to be better prepared for any future emergencies. Chinese capacity to meet purchase commitments is directly affected due to the ongoing US mainland China tensions. Um, the U.S. has also initiated a trade war with China over its unfair, so-called unfair trade practices, significantly reducing bilateral trade. President Trump's economic advisors have equated economic security with national security and have spoken of their desire to um, disrupt further the supply chains that leave the U.S. dependent on China. The tensions between the U.S. and China have weakened their relationship and what would some what some would call a decoupling between the world's two largest economies. Thus, even before the pandemic hit, several factors were reducing globalization already. We are witnessing single rate cut actions in all major governing authorities, from the Bank of England to the US Fed, the ECP, and others. These government spending initiatives are all towards bolstering demand. Since all nations depend on trade, it is imperative that they cooperate to lower barriers, keeping trade flowing and foster a strong recovery once the public health crisis abates. New Zealand and Singapore committed in late March to remove restrictions on trade and essential goods and keep their supply chains open. Canada, Australia, Chile, Brunei and Myanmar later joined their bilateral agreement. Tariffs, export restrictions, and continuation of U.S. mainland China tensions exacerbate and prolong the impact of the COVID-19 shock to global trade. The deepening U.S. mainland China trade war and nationalist reactions to COVID-19 are reshaping global economic relationships. Alongside these developments, two new mega regional trade agreements, the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership will refocus East Asia's economic ties in the region itself. The new accords are moving forward without the US and India, once seen as critical partners in these two um, mega deals. They will yield especially large benefits for China, Japan, and South Korea, and in fact, losses for the US and, China, and India. The trade war makes these deals especially valuable because it strengthens East Asian inter interdependence, which could be the push needed to foster closer ties between India and the US. 
Once the crisis passes, perhaps the US and the EU will emphasize global cooperation rather than national self-dependence. We envisage an eventual push to increased open markets, which will mobilize global capacity to meet renewed demands through innovative solutions, new business opportunities in terms of evolution of services and products, and accessing new markets. So the implementation of tariffs, as an example, unless they are very high, may not always have a large impact on trade. We must consider the importing countries' economic growth levels, exchange rates, and consumption patterns. Sometimes adding a small duty may be offset by current currency uh, devaluation. Thus, the penal effect may be minimized. Asia, for example, remains a beacon of hope. The demographics are such that the middle class in itself is so large now that it may be stratified into different wealth groups with varied demands and levels of consumption. And therefore, global companies must make sure that they have the right product mix to be able to cater to those emerging demands. Asia is highly integrated in the global value chain. The strength of its recovery is very dependent on external demand. So we're looking at a need for ongoing openness and innovation capabilities as well as the forging of stronger links within the region for enhancing regional cooperation and integration. But there may be good news on the policy cooperation front within the Asia Pacific and between Europe and the subcontinent as and when the pandemic abates. Extreme political and economic uncertainty since the Great Recession in 2009 has given rise and increased nationalism and protectionism. Global trade was adversely affected by the rise of trade wars. It is during this time factoring has remained resilient. We are witnessing increased aging of portfolio and slowdown in collections. Due to the breach of predefined covenants and ratios with funders, we see a cancellation of committed funding lines. So it's no secret that during any such crises, the factoring community has effectively picked up where banks have pulled out of their financing commitments. SMEs have in fact remained afloat and even benefited from eventual growth opportunities brought on by availing such receivables finance, finance offerings. Given the ongoing uncertainties regarding these supply chain disruptions that we are witnessing, the need for liquidity management is greater now than ever before. Not just that, whenever we face such crises, we not only find ourselves enjoying new opportunities, but with this also we face an increased risk of fraud and risks of chargebacks or dilution risks. Factoring facilitates security and control. I think it's clear for both the wider business community as well as the financial industry that there will be an ongoing liquidity crunch, exacerbated further by how banks will become more conservative and will scale back their lending based off of more stringent credit policies. What I wish to see or say here is the business community need not feel helpless because that is where the opportunity to seek alternative financing arises, particularly in the form of factoring. And there's a silver lining to all of this. Unless the, uh, unless the transaction structure requires otherwise, uh, the product is largely non-recourse and does not tie up your fixed assets towards securing lending arrangements. So there is no doubt that receivables as an asset class will be tested more than ever. Due to its contribution to visibility and control, factoring will be in high demand during and after this crisis as SMEs and companies source alternative sources of working capital financing. Access to trade finance was already a problem before the pandemic, with research showing that over 50% of requests for financial support were declined. Other reports indicate that the global finance, trade finance gap now stands at 1.5 trillion US dollars. And the International Chamber of Commerce estimates that almost 5 trillion US dollars of trade credit will be needed to kickstart the recovery from the crisis. And unfortunately, COVID-19 has only exacerbated trade financing gaps, which is seriously impacting small businesses' survival chances. Worsening trade restrictions and reducing trade volumes have caused companies worldwide to take extreme measures, including restructuring, reorganizing their supply, supply chains, perhaps even winding down and exiting their particular industries. Combine this with the shortage of financing in general, and it now appears that trade financing could hold the key to galvanizing economic growth. All in all, international trade and investments are crucial in securing a global economic and financial rebound. Trade finance especially is paramount in the creation of job opportunities and in assisting supply chain operations, which is why it's essential to fill that gap by providing customized, 
faster and smarter trade financing solutions that come with limited drawbacks and cater to smaller and non-traditional companies. As the pandemic abates, there could be a continuing mismatch between supply and demand as, as some economies may face lingering production or demand disruptions. The recovery may not be synchronized across all economies. And there's a rising China plus one mentality where CEOs are confidentially asking their supply chain teams to develop additional sources that are completely in, independent of China. The crisis has highlighted the value of diversification in trading relations and seeking out new market opportunities. These steps can help reinforce resilience and enhance adaptability. Manufacturers need to maximize their internal capabilities and focus on building their efficiencies. This will enable them to work with the anticipated shorter lead times and tighter margins. As recovery is underway, investment and innovation to differentiate products and improve processes may help to bolster trade performance. And there's a surging interest in sustainability and, and ESG, which is economic, uh, sorry, environmental, social, and governance uh, uh, initiatives. Going forward, underwriting decisions could take into account clients' behaviors related to environment, such as resource depletion, climate change, waste and pollution, towards employees and local communities, whether they have enough money to allow for them to put food on the table. And corporate policies geared towards uh, governance, including tax, corruption, structure, remuneration. Um, this evaluation will begin very deep into the supply chain. And this doesn't mean that this is a defensive action against the pandemic, but this is more of an overall flight to quality. The efforts could well be worth it. In the end, ESG could open up new market opportunities. In the face of continued uncertainty and policy changes, businesses should remain abreast of available information and developments. And during this time, many businesses may find new risks and opportunities due to ongoing trade policy developments. Keeping track can be beneficial. So I would suggest to feel free and contact any one of our subject matter experts or refer to the news and resources section on the TradeWind website. You are as good as the cash you carry in your pocket. But we won't get into any working capital ratios and jargons. It's simply about how you manage your cash. So prioritizing working capital allows clients to make strategic investments, which in turn drives operational efficiencies and ultimate, ultimately driving down overheads. As a company that's been operating uh, for over two decades, Tradewin understands the importance of ensuring business continuity during unprecedented times, especially as banks across the world are scaling back on lending due to the fear of the unknown. Historically, banks have always been cautious during recessions and other crises due to increased market volatility and decreased liquidity and risk mitigation. Due to the absence of necessary financing support, SMEs are most vulnerable in these circumstances, meaning that specialized trade finance companies like Tradewind are critical to their survival. Because unlike banks, their desire to support and grow a business despite its balance sheet strength is inherently built into their ethos and DNA. Tradewind has been supportive of its clients during both good and difficult times. We remain open, connected, and dependable. And during this time, we understand that these values are more important than ever. So what is it? In basic terms, export factoring is a technique in which a financial intermediary purchases a company's receivables and advances cash up front versus needing to wait for payments that will be due in two or four months. Small to medium sized businesses qualify for export factoring without much commitment in terms of pledging cash or fixed assets due to the non recourse, non collateralized nature of the product. Furthermore, the funding from export factoring is based on the credit worthiness of a company's customer rather than the borrower's own financials. By using export factoring, a company can take the risk to sell on credit. The majority of international trade is conducted on open account payment terms and export factoring makes it more feasible for companies to succeed in a trading climate where open account terms are key to maintaining competitive, um, competitiveness and deferred payments are the new norm. 
Export Packing provides a full suite of trade finance benefits, including cash advances, credit protection and collections, and reconciliation, reconciliation services. Not only is funding immediate, but Export Packing also allows for an easy funding process. From the application to the account setup, this financing method removes the rigid requirements often found when seeking a bank loan. And with less hoops to jump through, companies can get the can get the liquidity they need in order to focus on their core business and growth goals. Other than the fact that the utilization of such a solution does not reflect on the company's balance sheet as debt, there are also challenges that come into play with traditional financing that can be difficult to pivot around. Bank services can provide funds that are limited or exhaustible, but the funding from export factoring can grow as the company's orders and invoices increase. Such scalable financing enables companies to commit to higher volumes of orders, knowing they will have enough cash on hand to fill, to fill them while paying for other expenses involved in running a business. As everybody knows, it is an atypical market. Revenues are slow, liquidity is drying, and so it is imperative we optimize funds which drives benefit for business. Most importantly, it is key for the business to understand where to unlock liquidity from within the company itself and to create that organizational safety net. This can be done through receivables financing and credit insured financing, financing options. This is a long-term solution that we're looking at here, not as a knee-jerk response to the pandemic. Working with a tried and tested factoring company like Tradewind Finance that maintains an expansive network and sectoral expertise, expertise such as garment manufacturing, companies can have the opportunity to respond to certain market developments more quickly and make informed decisions. Achieving working capital optimization can be challenging when you're looking at the key areas that would effectively drive better business performance, such as improving relevant metrics like Days sales outstanding, days payables outstanding, days inventory outstanding, um, maintaining effective buyer relationship management, and sourcing external funding. For a lot of companies, managing DSO, DPO, and DIO tends to be right up the list. <clears throat> Some major working capital challenges in the next three to six months include supply chain disruptions, difficulty in raising funds, customer defaults, delayed payments, loss of existing business, and uh, a lack of visibility of, on liquidity. Here, we provide coverage against buyer non-payment and delays in payment, and we take the risk where you would otherwise be hesitant. And visibility is very important. Working with Tradewind's client access portal will allow for you to see your business's exposure in various jurisdictions in real time. Your dedicated client manager and our credit managers maintain the credit risk monitoring expertise that will allow for you to understand and identify new opportunities to deploy liquidity. In such times, some of the main challenges revolve around visibility, control, and making your business more efficient. Whatever the size, scale, and reach of your business, Tradewind is committed to assisting you in this journey, no matter which part of the country or region you operate in. So we're talking about your receivables here. We understand till the time you don't get your money in, you cannot make payments out. Your factoring financier should be able to provide you with cross-border support and to accelerate those buyer repayments, which will assist towards further investments and onward payments. Getting the right solution for your organization is absolutely essential. Your business can extend credit to buyers versus requiring payment in advance or in delivery or working on LC, ultimately allowing for competitiveness in a global marketplace where some of the big name buyers only buy on credit. Through our non-recourse offering, we're looking at accurate information and background checks on all buyers we intend to take exposure on. With that, you receive professional credit risk expertise and relative advice. So not only are we reducing day sales outstanding by driving efficiencies in, in the cash collections process, we assist with increasing sales. Our clients are moved up the value chain so that they are in a better position to be accepting direct buyer risk while preventing liquidity shortages brought on by delayed or non-payments. We're looking at reducing errors and reconciliation as many of the processes for collections and bookkeeping are allocated to your factoring partner, and in this case would be trade wind finance. 
So what we're doing is we're effectively purchasing your company's accounts receivables at a discount and assuming the credit risk on your behalf. The offering is no fuss and helps you keep things simple by managing receipts in an efficient way. It will add tremendous value, especially in a global environment where cash business is reducing more and more as time goes on. And if you haven't investigated this yet, I strongly recommend you get in touch with us for under, understanding your options. And, and some questions you should ask yourself or you would ask yourself when considering is, does my bank provide adequate credit limits against export accounts receivables or can I stand to benefit by selling more goods or, goods or services if I could just increase my risk appetite? Are my terms of sale competitive compared to my peers? Can I enjoy an edge if I can provide credit by a factor? Can I withstand the insolvency of my top one or two buyers if something goes wrong? In the face of the global recessionary climate, increased business failures both domestically and globally, and the tightening of credit across the board, clients must be ever more vigilant regarding the management of their accounts receivables. Entering into a long-term partnership with a factoring company provides a valuable extension to a company's credit management practices. You look at your buyers in a granular, objective fashion. You benefit from, er, from an early warning system that should, should, you know, should things begin to decline, your existing exposure can be effectively managed. Not forgetting, should there be an unexpected loss, the product inherently protects businesses from what could otherwise be a financially catastrophic event. For SMEs, a range of factors such as discrete sector challenges, balance sheet strength, funding structure, and organizational capability will affect the way they respond to these challenges. This means that the crisis will require an array of approaches depending on the magnitude of impact and balance sheet resilience. We are part of the very same world you are in. So given the challenges, we remain within your reach. Whether you're working remotely at the office or in other locations, we are here and available for all of your concerns. Tradewind's 20 year multi-market experience has contributed towards business success through transparent solutions, allowing for improved liquidity, which is key in a challenging economic environment. We aim towards assisting your business with those operational efficiencies, which allow for assessing and responding to situations quickly and safely. The key is to maintain the right balance of working capital to allow your business to thrive while not having wastage or inefficiency. In a recent study, some large corporates said that they spoke to suppliers on a weekly or daily basis. Having regular and detailed discussions with suppliers should be a key task as critical suppliers on the brink of failure may need their payments prioritized. And this is especially true vice versa. Suppliers must remain engaged with their buyers and remain front of the mind. As mentioned earlier, Tradewind assists with the collections and reconciliation process. We may be able to play a pivotal, pivotal role in terms of your ongoing communications where needed. Processes must also be managed carefully during this crisis period. Companies need to understand and plan for real-time cash flow scenarios with forecasts that incorporate the impact of government updates and reflect conversations with customers and suppliers. Operationally, Tradewind has remained unaffected. Even during intense lockdown periods, impact was more towards business volumes and not on operations. We're currently receiving high levels of new business inquiries and we, con and we confidently expect for this to increase. We work with a combination of credit insurance feedback and our own market intelligence. We remain incredibly close to our clients. We've adopted a human-centric view of the COVID-19 crisis and despite the pandemic, the stated goal is to continue to build trust, loyalty, and help clients through this time and beyond. We continue to consult and help them identify revenue mitigation actions if, declines, if there are declines in core revenue by helping them to find the necessary resources to unlock new or incremental pockets of future growth opportunity. Here I'd like to touch on some case studies. So in Hong Kong, Tradewind closed a $650,000 credit facility for a manufacturer of mobile chargers and other consumer electronic accessories. 
The company has a factory in Vietnam and one in Dongguan and exports primarily to the US and Europe to brand names like Belkin International. The deal, closed amongst COVID-19, provided funding to improve the company's working capital and to support their growth. The flexible funding solution from Tradewind equipped the company to meet their current demand for mobile chargers. Additionally, the arrangement demonstrated Tradewind's ability and commitment to deliver reliable financing to their client in a time of global crisis so that they could continue to flourish. In India, Tradewind provided a $5 million credit facility to a manufacturer of flavorings, essential oils, and fragrances. The company exports to the US and Europe and is using the facility to grow their business and expand into new markets. Since the company was asset light, local banks were reluctant to grant them post-shipment financing, prompting the need for a more flexible lender. They were referred to Tradewind who was able to design the right financing solution for them. In the UAE, as onshore lenders scale back and working capital facilities are tightened, businesses in the region face immense difficulty securing financing for their daily operations. Given the stringent lending climate and the resulting liquidity pressure they were experiencing, the client decided to capitalize on their receivables as a supplement to traditional bank loans and turned to Tradewind to convert these receivables into cash. The client received immediate support from the finance firm whose cash advances allowed them to readily cater to their capital demands. Working in tandem with the client's banking lines, Tradewind's non-recourse facility was especially suitable because no collateral was necessary to secure it. Thank you to our audience members for participating. Please do not hesitate to reach out where I can connect you with our business development team to learn about additional case studies where some of our offerings have been implemented successfully and how this financing structure can help you grow and sustain your business. We can progress these conversations in your own time. And once again, thank you to Fiber to Fashion.